Hello, this is Warlord. This tutorial is for those that have never used Marvelous Designer, and in particular those that have never used it in the Character Creator 3 pipeline. So what we're going to do is cover some basics in as short a time as possible to get you a quick start into creating your own character clothing. So let's get started. We've got the default model in front of us, and what we need to do is export this out as an OBJ, because that's what we're going to import into Marvelous Designer to use as our avatar. So I'm going to come over here to File, I'm going to go to Export, and I'm going to go to OBJ Nude Character. not going to change anything here. I'm just going to export it here. Now, what I'm going to do here, since sometimes OBJs can fill up a folder, is I'm just going to go ahead and make a new folder, and I'm going to call it CC Blank. Open it up, and then I'm going to put in CC Blank Female. This way I know it's the female, or you can go ahead and further say like default female. Now that's all we got to do right now in Character Creator. That gets us uh, our main mesh out to use a Marvelous Designer. Okay, now I'm in Marvelous Designer 8, and I want to add that avatar that we just exported. So I'm going to come into File, and I'm going to go to Add, not Import. I'm going to go to Add, add it as an avatar, go to that location, you can open or add if you're going to use like more than one avatar or like have furniture in to drape things around. In this case we just want to open it and make sure it's on centimeters. Now we're ready to go ahead and uh, start making our clothing. Okay, let's take a look at just making a, a simple, uh, simple pair of pants. So I'm going to come in here to the waist and I'm just going to draw out one half of the pants. Go right up to underneath the crotch and then finish it out. Now, when you first start, a pattern like this will work and you'll see how we put patterns together. But this can cause a, a few areas, a few problems sometimes not fitting real well in the crotch. So generally there's some changes I make here. I just showed you a simple way to draw that out. Usually, come up here to the second uh, toolbar here, Edit Pattern, and I'm going to move this over just a little. Then I'm going to come in here to edit curvature, come over here and I'm going to pull this out kind of down here towards the bottom. Doesn't have to be perfect, just something like that. Go back to the edit and then I'm going to just straighten this out a little. Something like that. Now none of this has to be precise. And you want to take more time than we're going to take in, in this. Now I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to go to Transform Pattern. Click on the pattern, right click, and go to Symmetric Pattern with Sewing. And what this is going to do is do half the sewing for us when we're on one half of our pattern. And now you're fixing to see what I mean. I'm going to hold down Shift so I can get them both. I'm going to Control C, right click, Mirror Paste. Now we've got those pasted in. I'm going to come over here, right click, flip horizontally, and what we're doing is we're putting the, the face out the right direction because this is going to be the back of the pants, and we want the texture to be facing the right direction. Now we're ready to sew these together. Used to we had to do all our sewing over here, and you had to, you had to develop a, an eye for how to do it. Because you didn't sew from this side to this side. You actually sewed from end to end, like that. And it sewed together your edges. Now, since we had symmetry picked, uh, it sewed both sides. But now, if you have version 8, if you're using version 8, you can come up here and click in this window, and it will sew for you. So let's go ahead and let's sew up the center areas. Now we probably need those a little closer to the body, but let's see what happens so you can see. And as you can see, they were so far away that they didn't even get to the, to the body. And all I did was Control-Z to undo. Uh, you can also just come back up here. I hit this right here to start the simulation. That stops the simulation. And Control-Z to undo again. Now you don't have to stop simulation. You can just Control-Z. Anyway, I'm going to grab uh, up here. This Transform Pattern Tool is probably 
These first two are the two you're going to use the most, or at least it's the two I use the most. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, it's easier to select over here. And I'm going to move these closer. And after a while, you'll see which patterns go which. Patterns can be pretty strange to work with at first. All we're doing is moving close together so that they have a chance to work when we run the simulation. Now, there you see, and, and you can almost see where you can kind of have a skirt. All we'd have to do is sew the front ones up across here. But we want these to be pants. Well, let's just go ahead, let's go ahead and take a look about sewing these across here. Just so you can see. And we didn't really build this to be a skirt, but you can see what I'm talking about there. So I'm going to take that off. And what I actually want to do is we want to sew the inner part of these legs up. I'm sorry, over here I'm using segment sewing. And what that does is sew those up. Now we may have to do some maneuvering here, but let's see what happens. Okay, as you can see, this leg over here doesn't want to really get on there, so we're going to move it over a little and we'll move this one over a little and let's see what happens there we're getting better you could also pull that out okay and like I said you can grab things and pull on them when it's in simulation mode and you can pull little things like this out and things like that but iClone can take care of those little things just as easy as you can here when you use your conform feature. So we're not going to worry about that a whole lot right now. Anyway, you can see how simple that part was. Now let's say in this fabric that we want it to be a different color so we can see it a little easier. You can just come in here and change your color. Uh, there's also a way over here to rename it. And you can come in here to presets, like they have leather and different things like that. I'm just using the default right now. So, let's say also that uh, we wanted to build a waistband on here, because all pants have a waistband pretty much. And we want it to be a different kind of fabric, so we can go ahead and add another fabric. And I'm probably going to make this one just deliberately long so you can see what I'm talking about, so you can see how to adjust things on the fly here. So this is going to be our waistband. I'm going to control C, mirror paste. I come over here again we're going to flip it horizontally move it back and around put it in position and this may seem a little tedious at first doing this but it really gets pretty simple after you've done it a while now if we sew from here we're going to have a problem because these are individuals and there's only one this is a solid piece where these are two pieces now what we could do is I could have come in here on this first one and just by right clicking hit split and go to uniform split and then I could have copied that or I can just come in here and split both now to show you what I'm talking about I'm going to go ahead and do this. Looks alright so far. And let me show you something else here too while we're at it. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Do that. You can actually sew wrong. You'll see here where that is looks right. This is crossed up. If you do that, then sometimes that will cross up your sewing. As you can see right there. And it will twist it up when you go to pull it up. Sometimes you have to do that to make it fit. That's why there's two ways to do it. You always want them to be as straight across as possible, just like that. So you can see where this little plus is on both sides, this little thing that sticks up. You can make sure that you pay attention to where that's at when you click it down. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same here. And here. And this is probably going to be too long or too big. Let's go ahead and simulate it. Now you see what I mean by it's too loose and some other things like that. So what we're going to do is let's come in here. First off, let's move it down to where it's even. And then let's come in here and grab the top. And let's make it a little 
smaller and we can grab both ends and make it a little shorter and now as you can see it's tightening up re-simulate and there you see it's tightening up and now you have a waistband now I do realize this in the 1940s and we don't all have high waistbands like this but that's the great thing like I said before about using this program is how it works on the fly we can come in and change all of that pretty simply so let's come in and let's select the tops of this and let's lower them down you don't necessarily have to lower those with it it'll come down with it and there you can see we've lowered that now let's say you've decided that you want shorts no problem and you just keep going to wherever you want them re-simulate if you're having a little bit of trouble you can always pull those back out now the reason it did this because it was longer and the pivots were different and you can see what happened there so what I would need to do in a case like this is just come up here and grab all of these and move them up and then you have shorts now like I said don't worry about these little things you can sit here and pull them out and go back and forth with it there's pressure and other things you can use but iClone will take care of that uh, CC3 will take care of that just as easy so anyway that's how we have that if that's what we wanted I'm going to go ahead and pull these Excuse me back down to a little longer if you wanted to make pre pants you can stop wherever you wanted them to be Now, if you don't like the way it re-simulates, again, you may have to move them. That's just part of doing this. And you may want to go ahead at times and move them all down. Placement does have quite a bit to do with uh, how it will simulate the cloth about there there we go and of course if we wanted cloth that was bigger or bigger pants you would do things like that and as you can see they hang looser And that's pretty much all there is to that. It's a great little tool for making changes on the fly. Now let's add some cuffs. As there is a difference in working in pairs like in symmetry versus uh, mirrored paste. So I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to grab the uh, square rectangle on cloth. And pull out the cuff. then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go ahead and set symmetrical pattern because these two will go together now I'm going to hold down shift select that control C and now I'm going to mirror paste if you ever find that your sewing is getting crossed up that's because you mirror pasted or used symmetry backwards and you may have to go back and start over on those particular pieces and things so anyway we've got that much done and of course down here we've got to do our flip horizontal and actually place it where it'll work and Now we want to go ahead and sew. Again, you can sew from either window. Make sure they aren't crossed up. Sew the ends. I don't 
think we need to raise them up, but we will. And simulate. Okay, and there you have your cuffs. take a quick look at basic texture. I'm going to drag and drop a texture from an open explorer window into it. You can see we have texture, normal map, or roughness. This is a texture. Now it's blue because I had blue down here, remember? So we can come down here and change this to white. And that way we can see our texture. Now there's also a texture mode to work on it to help you line things up. Depends on, on what you want to do and how out of line things are. Just to show you a little bit here, actually this lines up pretty good, but just to show you what I'm talking about, you'll click on this, click on each one, and there's a way, let me get to the one we're looking at, right there, you can rotate that however you want it, and move it to where the colors match up a little better. Or you may decide you want this part to be rotated a certain way. Kind of like that. Now we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm just showing you the basics of it. And how you can come in and uh, match things. Now we just did one side there. You'd have to also do it on this other side over here. But that is just a quick way of just dragging and dropping and getting some simple textures on there. And of course you can do the same thing over here if you wanted to. We would drag and drop a texture on it until it's your map. And now we have a cotton texture on there. Now it's time to export, but before we do that, we need to go over and straighten out our actual UV map. So we come over here to Simulation and go to UV Editor, and all we're concerned with is what is in between, let me find it here, oh, I'm sorry, right up here, all we're concerned with is this one square. Let me move these out of the way. This is zero. Whatever's in this zero square is what exports. So. Sometimes you create your own map. You have to stack them together yourself. I mean, you could come in here and put these two together and move them down. Do any little thing like that. But it has to fit, at least that's my understanding, within this square right here. And now these are ready to export out. And so what we do now is we make sure with Transform Pattern selected that we select all our patterns. We go to File, Export, Export Selected, and let's just call these Pants. Now I'm going to weld these, I'm going to make a single object, weld it, and make sure it's in centimeters. Hit OK. And now we're ready to finally get back over into CC3. Now in CC3, make sure you have the same character that you exported out earlier, so it'll fit. We're going to go to Create, Cloth Hair Accessories, and we're going to bring those pants in. Now as you can see, they didn't exactly fit just perfect. For me, what I've had to do generally is come over here to Z and go one forward and minus one down. I don't know why that does that, but it really doesn't create any problem. Everything still works fine. And of course we really don't need the underwear. We could go ahead and let it conform over it. But there's no use in having that extra added load on the engine if we're not going to see it. So we have it in here and we have it pretty much placed where it needs to be. So let's go ahead and transfer skin weight. And I'm just going to leave it on default. And then as soon as that is done, I'm going to go to conform, calculate collision. You can do it twice if you want sometimes even like to come up here and hit it once and then save that as default and now let's see how that works with posing I 
I'd have to say that works pretty good as far as getting it in there and getting it to work. You can see we didn't worry about the little poke throughs and things in Marvelous Designer because our conform feature will take care of that here. Anyway, this is just the basics of it. There's a whole lot more you can do. You can make belt loops, belts. Belts you kind of have to do in three pieces, one across the back and one for each side, and you sew all those together. You can do caps, socks, all kinds of things. You just have to figure out the pattern for them. You can go online and look at patterns. You can look at other people's uh, marvelous designer work, look at their patterns and things. As you go on, it will get very intuitive. This is an incredibly powerful program and really does complement the Character Creator 3 Pipeline Edition. Anyway, I hope this helps.